but at this point, uh, Coach Stone, go ahead and take it over. Perfect. Hey, I want to thank everybody that's either come on or stayed with. Remember, if I do a horrible job, my name's Tom. Uh, but if you, if you like it and you, you're, you think I'm doing a good job and I, you want me to come back, I'm more than happy to come back and do another one for uh, Glazier because it's an awesome program. Um, but here we go. If you have any questions too, write them in there. Uh, I'll answer them at the end if that's okay. Um, and then if you need anything, ask. Also, the great thing is right now, if you did jump off and you didn't listen to this one, you're going to miss something out because I'm going to give something free at, in, like in between at the end. So make sure you do this. Here we go. How to develop a great youth play offensive and defensive playbook. Now, at the end of the day, you could do it for anything. And if you're a high school coach, college coach, indoor football coach, women's football coach, you can do this at any level. I just call it youth because it's, you know, a lot of coaches still play Madden, right? And they have a thousand plays. Okay, so here we go. Now, like again, just want you to know, coaches, I do this at everything I present at. And this is what I want to say. I want to thank all the coaches that ever coached me as a player, coached with me, coached against me. If it wasn't for them, I would not be where I'm at today. And I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart because they made me love this awesome game. And, you know, Coach Wurzall back at Revis High School, you guys know where that's at. You know, he saw something in me and he said, you know, you're, you're pretty good. And, you know, things like that. And then I went to colleges and things like that. And I played indoor football. I was very fortunate. This is where I've been. Uh, I've been a head coach. I've been, uh, you know, a national team coach. I won a gold medal. I didn't say that last one um, with a national team. Um, you know, I played indoor football. I've coached indoor football. I, I coached over in Australia with the National Outback team. I'm currently at Rockford Boylan High School, where I am the offensive. Um, like, I, you know, I'll say this. I'm not a big titles guy, right? You know, all the people that know me, I, I, run, I do the quarterbacks. I'm up in the box on Friday nights. I'm the field goal specialist, and I'm the GSD coach. And we all know what the GSD coach gets stuff done, you know. Uh, but that's where I've been. Uh, I've, had, I've, I've presented overseas. Used to work for some big programs also that you see up there with the logos. Uh, just a little thing like this was a recap, so I apologize, coaches, you've already heard this. I combined my love of teaching um, to create Coach Stone Football in the spring of 2017. Uh, you can go to my website. There's, a, there's some free stuff too, coaches. I didn't say that last time. There's some free stuff. If you're a, a PE teacher, there's some games in there. Um, from all the times I've ever presented uh, at Eifert's. Um, I created my Back to the Basics book and my football camps to teach skills and techniques to improve player confidence through basic drills while having fun. Because fundamentals lays a foundation while utilizing the necessary skill to set to become an athlete. I wanna personally thank all the coaches that are attending tonight. I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. All the coaches that are here tonight, thank you so much and all the ones that are going to listen. Thank you for making a difference in the lives of your players, both on and off the field. I've, when I go travel overseas or do a camp uh, with youth, high school, whatever, I love it when the kids come up and thank you, me. I love it also when they see you guys meshing as a coach and player and getting stuff done. It's like the light bulb effect, right? Boom, light bulb goes off. I think it's awesome, you know? So here's the intro, right? This one's going to be a little different. It's, it's not going to be as long, but it's going to be more information. So this is very important to understand. Um, we already did the intro, and I already did the thank you. The FBI football resource, that's something I would literally make a copy of it and use it all the time. What's FBI? If you were here last time, it's football intelligence. You're also going to see the Coach Stone Learning Triangle. Uh, we're going to talk about the arch I created, the offensive hexagon for playbooks, the defensive box for calling defenses and making defensive playbooks, football resource, and then I'll have a close and questions. So there are less things now, but you'll see what I mean by how it just gets bigger and bigger, okay? And if we have any questions, like I said, put them in the uh, – mine's up on top. Uh, I will definitely answer them in all the, at, the, uh, at the end of the presentation. Okay, so the football resource, the uh, football intelligence thing. I did this a long time ago when I was uh, coaching – at a college, and I and we had to go as and you guys know this with youth coaches or high school coaches, you guys go from like this coach, this coach, this coach, when you go to when you hear speakers, right? Well, we had some coaches on our staff. We wanted to go just go see this guy speak, but 
it didn't do nothing for us. If that makes sense. I just want to go here and speak, Coach. Now, that's fine and dandy, but what happens if you have something that could help you win or get you to that next level with that coaching experience? You know, if you're just hearing a real guy, a real good speaker speak, that's great. Go do it. But if you're just going to it to just hear him speak, you can always get a recording unless you're going to get a picture with him. You know, go somewhere that's good. We talked about the earlier one. Don't go to a spread no huddle clinic if your team is really big and runs a ground and pound because it doesn't help you out realistically in your football program. Now, if you have more coaches and one coach goes here and one coach goes here, then yeah, definitely go to the third one because you want to make sure what do you do now successful You can write all that down there when you go right before you go to a clinic and then what can you add realistically to your football program? Because I didn't say this last one. If you go hear someone speak and you don't run it exactly like they say, it's probably not going to work, coaches. Just remember that. Also, if you're hearing jet sweep and cutting and things like that, and you can't cut in youth football, because they say, oh, the cut is the most important block, then you probably don't want to be there much longer, you know, unless you just want to hear the guy speak. I created the following learning techniques to make sure both players and coaches fully understand the playbooks, okay? So this goes into the learning triangle, okay? Oops, sorry. So what is the learning triangle, right? It is something for like this. As youth coaches, we have to remember we know more than the kids. 95% of us should know more than the kids. Parents need sometimes help what to learn with the kids. Now, do I let you use this learning triangle? Listen, as long as you put me on social media and say, coach, I'm using your learning triangle, I'm all for it. Please do so, because that's why I wrote my books. I want that credit. Also, when you buy my books, you get bonus copies, stuff that you can take to the practice field. Every book has volumes that have bonus content. All you gotta do is read the book and you'll find it, okay? So what does the learning triangle do, right? And I put a review in the left corner because when I do the learning triangle presentation, and that's one coaches you probably want to do, if we can do another e-clinic, is just the whole thing's like the learning triangle. It's really awesome. So this is just a brief thing of it. Positions, okay? Positions. How many of your players at youth football or any level know all the positions? Think about that right now. So does little Billy know if he's playing left tackle the linebacker is not on the offense if that makes sense so if you don't do that i would recommend you doing this teach positions this would be great for dads and moms also or whoever the guardian is of that child next one gaps and holes listen coaches i know you're saying this is Coach, I know positions. I know caps and holes. I, you know that. But then if the player gets it wrong, don't be like we were 20 years ago where you make the kid run until it's sunset. Or you make him run a lap, he comes back, and he still gets it wrong because we didn't teach him the thing. We assumed he knew the answer. But, Coach, I taught the kid for hours. Everyone learns differently, and you'll see that in a little bit. Defensive line techniques, linebacker techniques. Now, I know what some youth coaches are saying. You're crazy. Why do you have that in there? Because here's the thing. If you teach them at a young age, the older they get, the more you can implement. Plus, your high school coaches have line D line techniques, especially if you're running options, zone read, RPO. I know, I know I'm saying RPO for youth football, but we know there are some coaches that try to run RPO. Some are successful. Some, it's kind of like running shotgun in an offense with five-year-olds. The ball goes over the kid's head 90% of the time. If that happens, why are you running shotgun? It's just something to think about. And then the last but not least, run and pass. So coaches, hear what I would say to you. If you know the positions, if you know gaps and holes, you learn the linebacker and D-line techniques, you can defend the pass, you can throw the ball to where it needs to be. 
you can stop the run and you can stop the pass by using the learning triangle. By doing those things with the triangle, you can do what's right there, run and pass. Okay, like I said again, going back to this, you can, with my other clinic I've done with the learning triangle, I go into very depth positions, gaps and holes. You can get this in my green book or any of my other books, but my green book is the one that has that and volume one, volume two had the most explanation of this. Okay, now we're on the arch, okay? This is important. What is the arch, okay? We talked about the triangle, okay? Triangle, boom. What's the strongest shape in the world? The triangle. How do I know that? Very simple, Boss Baby. You ever watch Boss Baby the movie? It's like the first two minutes of the show. Triangle, strongest shape, okay? The arch is something cool. I got this from my kids and I get all this stuff from my kids, these shapes. It's like a rainbow, my daughter says. I have four daughters and one son. Dad, you should do like a rainbow so coaches understand how to go from one end to the other end to get the pot of gold. I said, kids, that's awesome, you know? So I'm like, this is awesome. We just paid for college possibly, right? The insertion schedule. If you don't know what that is, we're gonna talk about that in a second. Then, if you don't do insertion schedules, do you do practice plans? Because if you don't do practice plans, that's really important, okay? Please do practice plans, especially if a parent or a kid ever gets hurt and they said, hey, uh, little Billy got in trouble at Oklahoma. Well, if it's on the practice plan, yeah, you probably did it. Or if you added it to the practice plan, yeah, you did it. But if, you, if that was an offensive day, how would you do Oklahoma? Did that make sense? And we shouldn't be doing that anyways with little kids, okay? And then playbooks, what this is all about. So you get from insertion schedules, practice plans, and then playbooks. Okay. Again, any questions, please put them up there. I know I saw a couple go up already. Okay, an offensive insertion schedule. Okay, this is an insertion schedule I created, okay? Also wrote blogs about it before, okay? And it was a two-part section. You can go on my website and read it, okay? From a past company I worked with. This is very vital. Came up with a whole template and everything, okay? It goes through every little thing. Coaches, the cool thing about this is this. If you've ever been around football for a while, make sure then I'm sure you remember the days when coaches would just, and I apologize. Remember if you're this coach, remember my, my name is Tom, you know, how many coaches remember you stretch or when you're a player stretch, then you run a few laps or you run a few laps, right? Stretch. And then you go straight in the scrimmage. Boom. Rest of practice is done. And then you condition at the end, right? Those days are over. What do youth players actually learn those pre those, those practices, nothing, not anymore. They want different. So why, why have an assertion schedule? An assertion schedule is an important piece of every coach's practice plan and will make life so much easier. You saw the example with the picture. It's writable PDF I have. So you can just put it in, change the date, put the days in, boom. It is especially important to youth level because because coaches typically spend don't spend the whole day talking together. Now, I know some coaches in here with youth teams have 10 coaches, right? It really doesn't happen hardly. You have one or two coaches working with you. Sometimes you don't even get to meet each other. You're like texting each other. If you had an assertion schedule in a, in a, Google, draw, a Google Drive or something else, you could get just before often timed or you're just meeting up right before practices. You can fill that in or fill in your practice plan once you have your insertion schedule done. It is a list that must be completed within a certain amount of time, just like a teacher. You're teaching the kids to learn. Because when you teach something, you don't just teach the next thing. You review something, and then you teach the new thing, if that makes sense, coaches. The lists are necessary steps to lead to football access. I've never seen a coach that just puts in play, 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 unless they have tons of great athletes, and just swipe the table all the way to the championship. Okay. An insertion schedule is a useful tool when it comes to teaching the game's most important all-player skills. And I, I apologize, coaches, I don't have a physical copy to show you of, of it, but you'll see later on, you're going to like what you see. Well, like what you hear, I mean. You know, so it has everything from the date, time, each skill per thing, and it's all-player skill, including tackling and turnovers. 
Okay. Why an insertion schedule? By implementing a search schedule, you're laying the foundation for your program to be successful and you'll be safer. You know, also your athletes are more likely to absorb it so they can retain the skills so they can do the drills for the, I'm sorry, the, the things for the next level of play. Remember, at every level of football is different. So the earlier you lay the foundation, the better chance the athlete has to improve. For example, if a kid is in seventh grade and never played quarterback before, is he going to learn how to, how to read the defense faster than the kid that was in fifth, five-year-old, all the way up to the thing? It's almost impossible. Okay? I mean, that, seven, that seventh grader would have to lose so much stuff. And when that kid's already been learning, boom, 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 boom. Especially if your youth program, you have the same offense that's washed down from the high school, phenomenal. No offense, phenomenal. Here are some examples of assertion schedules. Offense, defense. Other examples I've made. Tackle, because tackling is important, right? Special teams. Some youth programs don't use special teams. So right now, the only ones you use are offense and defense and tackling. Because if you have a team that tackle well, then you have a team that's going to help you be successful. Turnover insertion schedule. I believe it's very vital to have a turnover insertion schedule. Teaching the kids how to get that ball free. Learning how to tackle. Running plays. Offense, defense, special teams, if your team, is, if your team has special teams. All right. So if you follow me on Twitter, like I said, if you have any questions about insertion schedules, please put them up. I would recommend if you have Twitter, follow me on Twitter. As a bonus for viewing this Glazier Clinic, football clinic, I will send you the copy of all my insertion schedules that are tackle football. Okay? If you, if you contact me through my website or DM me on Twitter, that's what I would do. If you, if you want them, you got to go on Twitter and hashtag tag Glazier in it, hashtag or coaches who win. That's what Glazier does. Okay. I will give you all of them. Follow me on Twitter. Make a little post. Boom, coach. I want, don't even say what you want, right? Just go, you know, Coach Stone. Boom. I'll like, I'll, I'll, I'll like it. I'll DM you. You DM me. We get the email out. We're ready to rock and roll. If that makes sense. If you want to contact through my website, that's fine. I'll give you one. And it'll be the only one. So, so you know. I also made these for flag football. So if you buy a flag football drill manual book over 500 pages, you have a flag football one. That's pretty cool. And the cool thing about the insertion schedule, I made it so in the lines you saw it right here, you can even change what that is there. Because as a coach with me, I'm always looking to get better. I want to be a sponge when I go to Glaciers. I'm always sitting in there before I'm speaking, learning from the best that the Glacier has to offer. So again, remember, follow me on Twitter. If you start following me now, boom, I will try to get them out tonight. No lie. Practice plans. Now we're at the top of the arch, okay? The, in, the middle of it, the thick of it, okay? Questions. Who in here uses practice plans, right? We have, we have coaches here, and we'll have coaches uh, watching this down the road. If you say yes, how do you store them after you're done with them? Do you throw them away? Are you like me? Write down, you get a piece of paper with a practice plan, you write it down, and you put your notes in what you need to put in for the next day. Or text your quarterbacks or text your linemen what they need to work on or what they need to watch on video. If no, here are some ones on the phone. I'm going to show you some examples of them, okay? Actual ones I've done in my past, okay? Uh, and here's what I would say. The next question I have, do you know what you had dinner on this day five years ago. Tom, I don't mean to get you on the mic, but Tom, do you know what you had for dinner five years ago? Nope, Tom's off. <laughs> All right, here we go. Sorry, Coach, I was muted there. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. What did you have five years ago on this day for dinner? <laughs> oh, I had a uh, – I was steak. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, great job. Okay, awesome. Okay, remember, if I'm bad, my name's Tom, everybody. I'm just telling you that right now. Okay. Of course you don't. That's why you utilize a practice plan that helps you record what you do and allows you to be more an effective coach. Because I know all of you coaches that are listening or going to listen, you love to lose by a thousand points, right? 
I'll tell you this right now, when I was a head coach or nothing, you can even ask my coach at Rockford Boylan, what does Coach Stone do after the game? He's already watching film on the next opponent. Or he's putting in the ODK. Or writing down what we need to work on for Monday's practice. Because with when we're playing at a higher level, high school coaches are listening. If you don't win, you know what happens, especially in certain states. Youth coaches, you're laying the foundation. Don't worry about winning. I'm serious. If the kids have fun and they're learning, I guarantee you when they get to the high school, they'll thank you. Okay? I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. And listen, you still can go win. Go for it. But just don't make it all about the winning. Because then the kids will feed off it, the parents will feed off it, and everything. All right. So here we go. What needs to be in our practice, right? And then coaches, I'm serious. Let's take the test, right? What do you put in your practice plan? You put in your put in the questions list. What do you put in practice? You're gonna put something in that I probably don't. Ready? Here we go. Functional warm-up, right? Everyone should stretch. Hopefully, you're not that coach. You just have them run a lap so you guys can talk about practice. That should happen beforehand. Use the insertion schedule you'll get by following me on Twitter and hashtagging for coaches win here or coaches win. Pre-practice, none of you youth coaches. Okay, I'm just like show of hands, right? How many times have you gone to a practice early? You set up all the equipment. Kids start coming in. It's all destroyed. I guarantee you, people listening, that's happened to you numerous times. So what I recommend is do a pre-practice. Garbage cans are awesome, trust me. Okay? You can do that for a lot of things. Quarterback snap. Play, five, play the 500 game you got from the last one. Do things. Play a tag game with them. Get, just get a swim noodle, cut it in half, and have them play a tag game. So then they don't destroy the stuff you're setting up. Give them an area over there to play. You have your stuff over there, if that makes sense. Specials, hitting yardage. You can do that for make sure you have a trick play in. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And also, if you have special teams. Does it, now, this is no order, just so you know. This is not, even though it's in my particular order, you don't have to put this in this order. Pre-practice walkthrough. This is before pre-practice. Just walk through stuff. Hey, walk through a play that you're good at, that you're not good at. If you're good at toss, like you should be in youth football, then don't run it 30 times in practice. Script your practice, and then boom. If you get volume one, I have a script thing for youth coaches and coaches, just like we do at the high school on that. But it's a different template. Indy, got to have individual time. You'll have more individual time now in the off season before you start playing in games and then all of a sudden, your indie time goes from here to that. And then when it gets darker out, you know that, coaches. Group. That's like running backs, quarterbacks. We talked about it with the last one. You do O-line quarterbacks. You go nine on seven, seven on seven. Uh, inside shell, outside shell with just those guys. Now, not going against each other. I'm sorry. Not going against each other. Just going RVAs, routes versus air. You should be 100% completion percentage, if that makes sense. If you can get that by the end of the season in practices, that's phenomenal, you know? And shoot for goals. All the time, shoot for goals in practice. You know, Skelly and under center. If you don't have enough players, because I know every youth team has a 1,000 players, right? It's not like it used to be. Use garbage cans to be bodies. Your offensive linemen, your five offensive linemen could block seven or eight garbage cans. I mean, they're going to block every single one, but they'll block them, okay? Scout D versus offense. That's a cone drill. That thing's in my green book. Scout O versus defense, two whistle drill. We talked about this earlier, coaches, right? In the last web, uh, e clinic. What does a whistle mean? Stop. So don't use it to start a drill. If you use it to start a drill, it's not good for you. So use it, to not start a drill. Use cadence to start a drill. If you use a two, if you use a whistle, that means it stops the play just like it's going to do in a real game. Team. How many coaches in here condition? Condition players, because I, I know every coach in here. I mean, I can just look at a team, right? I don't know if Coach T's still in here, because I thought I saw him earlier. If Coach T's in here, he used to love running all the way down and back every time. you got to be 30 seconds now, right? Tom, 
remembers back in the day, he had to run 30 seconds to get that, that ladder in there, right? Yep. Here's, yeah, right? So play a game with them. Make up a Fortnite game. Make up Capture the Cone or do something like in my books. Play a PE game with them. Play ultimate football. Play flicker ball, you know? Especially those linemen, okay? Some of them will not make your time coaches, okay? And if you want to time them, that's fine. That's be my guest, okay? But I know this. If I was right now and they told me to run, I'm good. I don't want, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make that time, you know? And plus, when you do that timing and the kid doesn't make it, I know we're clapping the kid in, but if it's the same kid over and over and over and over again, how many times is he not gonna want to get out of the car? Because coaches, when that practice starts, those parents are either it's a two-hour babysitting service or they're on their cell phones the whole time, you know, or watching or like yelling at their kid. You know, I hate to say that, but that's what sometimes those practices turn out to be. So try playing a PE game. If you want some PE games, they're free on my website. Just go to my website, you know, coachstonefootball.com. I have plenty of games you can play with on my website. You can put in there and modify and everything. Icebreakers. Hopefully some of you coaches do icebreakers the first couple practices. Something fun, you know, do something like that. Make sure you have a closing and talk to them, you know, you know, and have them sit down, okay? And then film session before or after practice. I know some of you youth coaches are like, coach, you're crazy. There's no way I can turn a video on and those kids will listen. Coaches, take them to a Culver's or somewhere. You know, I'm sorry for saying Culver's. I don't, then they're not a sponsor or nothing, right? Dairy Queen, Burger King, whatever. And see if you know the management. Get a projector and get a room if they have those rooms or a pizza place. And guys, listen. If you listen for like 10 minutes, everyone gets ice cream. You can do a chalk talk session, a film session, something like that, or a classroom in your classroom. That's cool to do. Trust me, it teaches the kids other ways to learn. Uh, you know, my coaching, you know, my coaching strong point is I'm organized. You know, Coach Chris Brand, the uh, former boy college coach, you know, thank, I want to thank him too. I think coaches like, you know, and I, I want to thank all the coaches, like I said. But he, he really, I remember he gave me that nickname when we went somewhere and we needed technology. And uh, I said, coach, I got that, you know. So if you, got, if you don't have it, please find a coach that is a Boy Scout on your staff, especially when you get to the high school or college level that if you need something, boom, it's right there, you know. So here's an example of a practice plan. I apologize for this one. This is a flag football one. So pretty much, if you look, we do functional. Some of you coaches, I, I apologize, you won't be able to see all the things. But we have one, we have FWU, stretching. We played flag tag, that's modified sharks and minnows. You know, the Patriots use flags to in, in practice. I would definitely do like a sharks and minnows with the young kids. They would love that. Or use a tackle bar. Tackle bars are phenomenal for that to wrap and rip. You know, we draw it up plays and go over a sideline stuff. So like this practice, I believe this was like, the, uh, let's see, what practice was this? This was practice six. Okay, and this is, these are five-year-olds. I'm still drawing up plays on the sideline and have to go over sideline behavior just for 20 minutes so they understand like what's going on. And then we went, we, we went over plays, we went over defensive plays, and then we scrimmaged red versus yellow, you know, and that was a sixth practice, you know. And here's the thing, when you, when you go right away, boom, 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 and you know how the kids are. It, two hours, you're, I probably lost them, you know, and that was, that was in 2015. If you look on the top of the date, I guarantee you, I do not run practice anymore for two hours with five and eight year olds when I do flag. I won't even do that through nine through 11 with flag. It's one hour, boom, get in and get out. Uh, this was in 2000 thing. Oh, sorry. So this was a practice plan I did uh, when I was a head coach. If you see on one side, we had an offensive side. Uh, this was practice number six, because it was 3B. This is when we had the luxury of two days. You guys remember, coaches? Um, we would do the break was over because we started eight to ten, um, or eight to nine forty-five, or whatever it was, and then we'd have like fruit and everything for the players. Go over to stands, things like that. That's what we did in the second, third practice of the season. Now, coaches are thinking third practice, coach. Well, remember, coaches, two thousand seven, right? My playbook is probably like war and peace right now, right? 
But here's the thing. We had so much things we did before this that the assertion schedule was already put in back in that day. So I didn't have that, that template done, but now it is what it is today. And, he's, and then I would have notes on the bottom and I just took that stuff out so you know, I didn't get in trouble from past experiences. There's a uh, women's tackle football team, professional team that they're not anymore. They're probably one of the greatest ones of all time. Um, that was in 2010. Uh, Coach Konecki would have his side with the offense in the left side. And then on the right side, we'd have our defense. And then every coach would run boom, 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 certain things. And then you see at the bottom, we had offensive, defensive notes that we can just write in. Uh, then this is with our USA football practice plan. This is where we won a gold medal. Um, and then we would have all our stuff that we put in. He would, Coach Konecki would have his side. I would have my side with Coach Mack. And we just ran through our stuff. You know, and we went boom, 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 boom. You know, and we were very good about it. This team, in fact, won, um, I, I don't mean to say this, but we, play, we won the gold medal 201-0 uh, to zero and three games. So, and it's still a record now in USA football. No, and it, it's for any gender. This was ladies, just so you know, coaches. Uh, this was an all-star team I coach. Um, this was our uh, second practice. We only had two practices. So if you notice, my group time and my scout D and my go over to pregame, is really big. Now, are they older, older, older kids and older adults? Yes. But at the end of the day, we had to get stuff done. So like if you had practice one that you saw with the Western All-Star, it was all indie time. And then some group at the end. This one was boom, it was all that. And then we had to do stuff, you know? And then, you know, this includes FWU and you look at the bottom, review specials, five minutes each and things like that. Other tips for practice plans. Now, coaches, this is important. I know you saw the templates and stuff. And if you have a template you want to share with me, I'd love to see it. You know, just email me and I'll give you my information. Um, so here's what I would do for youth coaches or any level coaches. Ready? Don't have circus lines. No matter what, do not have circus lines, period. Okay? That is two people doing a drill, everyone else watching. Or doing a tackling drill, everyone watching. Unless you're doing something at the end, like a breakaway games in my green book, it's a cool thing for team unity where you keep points and everything. That's what you do. Drill speed level. We talked about that from the last one. Areas to improve on. Always do this. I'm very, very always like this whenever I do this. And especially at the high school, we film everything. If you're a youth coach and you can get a parent to film it, that'd be great too. What to fix. Which player needs to improve. Work on plays to improve your chances of scoring. If you have number two and the parent wants the kid to come early and you can tell the kid how to fix like blocking or things like that, that's awesome, okay? Have a plan to make sure you hit on a couple skills and drills at a practice. One, make sure agility is in there. Tackling, if you're not tackling, then do something to that extent. Blocking is super important. Conditioning. Remember, conditioning with games. Use PE games. Try it out. You'll love it. Drill speed level. I'll just go real fast. Oops, sorry. Uh, if you were here earlier, we went over it. If you're new, how it works is this. When you're doing a drill, what is your level? Start by teaching it walking without equipment and with equipment. Then do it jogging without and with. Now, some, play, some drills, you don't, need to, you don't need to do one or two, okay? Or you just need to do two. Zombie mode, if you're doing a drill and a guy's like holding a bag or doing something or press corner and the receiver's getting off, a zombie means once you hit that guy, he doesn't move anymore. Or it just goes really slow like a zombie. Because I, I remember when I was younger, we'd have people, when they hold the bag, they would just make us look bad technique-wise so they can take our spot. You know, I don't know if any coaches had that problem, but I remember that back in the day when I was little. I had a kid that always, like, wanted to be my partner, and then he'd go full go and hit me with a bag and stuff like that, and then I would get in trouble, and then he would have to run, right? And then I couldn't do it because I had no partner then. Full speed and rap, we all know that one. In game tempo, of course. Remember, don't do too much because every state now has a 
spot of how many minutes you can go, okay? What makes a good drill in football? It is one that benefits you and the, uh, your players and you. You guys heard this from the last one. When picking a drill, ask yourself the questions on the next screen. Of course, coaches, you all seen this already. Six steps to identify an appropriate football drill. Again, if you want to use this, coaches, just on social media, just give me a shout-out. That's all I'm asking, okay? And, I, again, PowerPoints, I'm more than happy to share them, okay? Um, what is the purpose of the drill, right? If I have a new coach at the high school level or whatever, or if I have a youth coach that wants to help me out, the first thing I ask him is this, what's the name of your drill, right? You know, then I ask, fill this out. If you can fill this out or just, or we just talk about it over, over uh, dinner or something or after practice, then we're fine. What is the purpose of the drill you're doing, coach? Does this drill rule plate relate to a game-like situation? Mm, okay. Is it effective? What skill is the coach trying to teach in this drill? You know, that's the question you would ask the other coach. What are you trying to accomplish? Does the drill have merit? If it doesn't, right now, one and two, just stop. We're done. Because here it's going to get worse, right? Is the coach teaching a drill that teaches toughness? Well, if it teaches toughness, you shouldn't teach it in the first place. Okay? How does the speed and distance come into play? Use the drill speed level. If you start a drill where they just ram heads in the first play, little Johnny is not going to like that. Little Johnny is not going to come to practice anymore. Then your numbers just went from little to smaller. Does the drill lead to player success? Do a drill that gives a player's chance to succeed, not run laps. They're not marathon runners. And make sure it has maximum participation. Maximum participation. I love coaches that I first coach with and say, I got this awesome drill. I'm like, okay, what is it? It's a drill where two kids do something and everyone else watches and cheers them on. And how long are you going to do that for? 20 minutes. So, and we have how many kids? 40 kids. So we have 40 kids. You want one drill to happen. And then we got to reset the drill up. And then next two kids go. Yep. That's the whole practice, coaches. Think about it. If you're that coach, I apologize. Remember, my name's Tom. If I do a bad job, my name's Tom. Remember, Tom A. All right. Any questions on this? Uh, like I said, if we have any questions on practice plans, Please ask. Uh, if you do purchase my books, you do get the templates on those. So if you're asking for those, I know a couple questions have come up, but I just want to give you a heads up. Here we go. Now you're like, finally, offensive playbooks, right? Here we go. Coaching tip. Run an offense that suits your team. Don't run an offense that you don't have athletes for, coaches. Offensive playbook, right? Hexagon. Okay, now for youth levels, you don't need to worry about personnel per se. For high school coaches, you need to worry about personnel, 10, 10, 11, 12, 32. All youth coaches, make sure you have formations. Make sure you have a motion, back formations, shifts. And then if you do that, run and pass in there. Now ready for this, coaches? Tidbit, a great coaching tip. Youth coaches, run on balance. You want to freak a defensive coordinator out in youth football? Run on balance. Put your center here, your guard here, and put everyone else on this side and see what happens. I'm not lying to you. You will thank me. Coach will call a timeout. If he doesn't, you run your toss. You're good to go. Score a touchdown. Thank me on social media. Videotape it. Thank Coach Stone for the Glacier E Clinic. Hashtag go Glacier E Clinic. I'm not lying to you. Then you're, well, some of you coaches will be like, Coach, I'm just going to call a timeout. Great. Call a timeout. You're going to talk about it, run other plays, then flip the play, put, this, put, player, put a tight end here, center, and then put everybody else on this side. You taught the one side how to teach it during that timeout. You didn't teach the other side. Remember that. So I could, you could run that at the first series of the first quarter, and then all of a sudden they take a timeout, wait till the second quarter, second series, boom, and go with it. Or coaches, youth coaches, get real close, break the huddle, have them just stand like in a bunch. And then right before this, right like 10 seconds left, boom, set up in your unbalance and run the ball that way. Okay, playbooks. This was the first size of my first playbook ever. Remember, I, we talked about this earlier with me and my practice plans. This is War and Peace. This is 1,225 pages. That was just for offense, though. 
That was my first offensive playbook. I kid you not. I was at a high school, just got out of college. I was coaching at a college, and I thought I was the greatest thing next to butter. And I took everything I learned from every single experience, and I put it in a high school playbook like that. And we were not good at all that year. The size of the playbook does not determine how effective it is. Fact, the level of coaching at the amount of time they keep their attention. Every grade is a minute. So first grade is a minute. Now, some fifth graders cannot even handle five minutes. So remember, you know, they're not at the same level as you. Be patient. Keep it simple, small, right? We talked about that earlier. Playbook. The older the players get, the bigger the playbook should be. Don't be a youth coach who runs a thousand different plays. This isn't Madden. I know some of you coaches are chuckling right now. You know a player or a coach that will give you a play because they play Madden. Wish they'd bring back NCAA, right, Tom? And just keep it always simple. Make sure the plays complement the team by assessing your players. Use fast players to get to the ball to the outside right away. If you have a bigger team, go ground and pound. Okay, now these things, we're not going to talk about it per se. I'm just going to go through them. The heck's gone. In my book, it goes into more detail. I will go over number six, though. Okay. What personnel do you have? That's for older teams, formations. Back formations could be for older teams or younger teams. Motions, I would use for both, unless your kids cannot. Like, they're always moving forward. I know some youth coaches know that. Uh, shifts are great. When you say down, make it a game where they all shift around like a puzzle piece. Uh, play calling, here we go. So start out in youth football with just three to five, with a couple formations, three to five different plays. Only when the players have mastered those plays, go on to the next ones. Here's a coaching tip. When picking plays, use terminology the players understand in the playbook. So if you are a youth coach, think about this, right? And I apologize for like these, these things, okay? If this is the center, this is the fullback, and then the tailback's down here, what are the numbers? One, three, two, right? Some coaches, down one is two. But if you think about it, that's not an order. Why can't you make a playbook the kids understand? One, two, three. Now, a lot of coaches are going to be upset with me. I apologize. Why do you do it? Because that's how I was taught. Coach Stone, how did you do it when you were at the middle school? You were a head coach. One, three, two. I did. I have changed that now because I've been teaching. I have 18 years left till I retire. It is one, two, three if I'm in an eye backfield. Try it. You'll like it, coaches. I mean it. Okay? Use animal names or NFL teams with positions like I did in flag football. You can get that in my, um, my playbook, my, my book that just came out Wednesday, last Wednesday. Literally, I had the kids pick the animals or the team names. They understood the playbook better than I did even though I made the plays up. Use words like right and for R for right, L for left. Do one syllable words, coaches. We're not Peyton Manning or Sean Peyton and Drew Brees. Listen to them mic up. It's like 40 syllables. And like we were taught, use a numbering system, any numbering system you want. Okay, that's formations. We'll just let that one go. Play calling, okay? Here's my plays I ran as a middle school coach. I'm not lying to you. These are all the ones I ran. I didn't even run option because we didn't need to. We ran toss, the number one play in youth football. If you're a coach listening, run that play. You'll be extremely happy, even if you want to do jet sweep. Run it. You'll love it. You'll love it forever. Fullback dive, fullback trap, because sometimes linemen go upfield too fast. A halfback power with someone pulling. Halfback lead with a fullback leading. And then you can run an option if you want to teach the kids how to pitch. But remember, more things go wrong when you option. Also, remember, coaches, when you run the football, take the snap, secure, get the handoff to the thing, secure the handoff, boom, that's three things. When you're throwing the ball, more things can happen. More bad things can happen. With those plays you see there, everyone, I guarantee, that's listening, that's a youth football coach, runs a pop pass if you don't do it. Run a boot pass where the player can boot. Please, youth coaches, run, sprint out. You will love it, especially if you have a fast athlete at quarterback. If he sees green, let him go. 
and tell the player, like, if you have a route that you want him to run, the receiver, if that guy leaves that guy, just throw it right to him. I know some of you coaches that are listening now and later will be like, we do that all the time, coach. Three-step drops, throw some slants, throw some outs, never throw the out late, remember. And remember, throw the fade. One of the top plays we used to always have back in the day. Trick plays. Coaches, do it. If you run toss, run halfback pass, it will work. Trust me. Okay, now some coaches are like, I already do that. Great. Run a reverse. But here's what I would say, all youth coaches. High school coaches, uh, maybe I would do the same thing. Don't run a double and triple reverse. Now some coaches are going to be mad at me. Remember my Tom, my name's Tom. But if the, if the team, you run a reverse, right? So I'm going to run this way, hand the ball off, boom. Those kids, all the kids over here were already fooled. Why would you run back into them? If you fool them once, you're gone. Does that make sense? But if you want to run the double reverse, be my guest. All I'm saying is more things can go wrong when you're in that backfield if you do a double reverse. Do a simple reverse. They, if they bite on a simple reverse, guess what? There's going to be one or two guys to beat. That's it. Why would you want to be – I would rather beat two guys than the other nine over here that i got to go back into. That makes sense, coaches. Any questions on playbooks? Nope. Great. If you do, put them in the comments above or below. Okay, here's the calling the defense as a box technique, okay? We go into this, and like I said, all this stuff is in my uh, books more in depth. Okay, a box, right? Defensive front. Okay. Stunt, if someone has one call. A blitz, coverages. So some coaches should have a front just call and a coverage call. Boom, you're done. Some will do one, two, and three, and four, right? If you do all that, I'm telling you right now, it's very basic. And I guarantee a lot of you coaches are just like common sense. But think about if you don't do this, or if you want to teach your players the box technique, it's great. Just like I said, post on social media, hey, Coach Stone, we're using it, boom, boom, you know, and thanks for doing that clinic for e-clinic for Glacier. I mean, give them props. This is awesome for all coaches, especially today. Tom, again, and Glazier, thank you again. I'll thank you more. But this is free for all youth coaches. Use it. This is a great football intelligent thing here. Coaching tip. Run a defense that suits, you know, the players you have. Don't run a defense that you don't have the athletes for. Don't run a 3-3 stack if you have all big guys. Because those linemen on the offense, once they get to that second line, everyone's going to be trapped in the garbage on defense. You know, I know a lot of youth coaches run like the, you know, 5-2. I mean, I, I don't know about you coaches, and maybe you guys want to chime in, but I think the 5-2 is still the greatest defense of all time in youth football, except the 6-1 maybe, you know. Okay, number one, what is it? Defensive fronts. It's the most important thing when you think about it as a starting point. If the kids can learn one, two, three, four, that's fine, right? And we talk about personnel packages all the time. Empty is zero. 32 is three backs and two running uh, – I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, three running backs and two tight ends, you know? So it's vital to a player's success to call fronts. So these are my examples that I have, and I have more in my book where I have actual pictures. A three-man front is a stack, you know, like a 3-3 three, three stack. An Oki is a zero and two fours or two fives, you know, seven in the box. A bear is a zero and two three techniques because we're talking about the learning triangle, remember, you know. And then a four-man front is an over and under, and I know a 5-2 is an under front, but coaches, remember, if a team goes empty, you're not going to rush five guys possible. That makes sense. And then a tight, tough, and heavy front. These are all in volume two, all this stuff that you see now. And like I said, if you have questions on fronts, please put them up in the question thing. I, I hope we can talk questions for like half hour. I really mean that. Number two, stunts. A stunt can include a one, two, or three player stunt. Okay? What's vital is this. When you're doing stunts, you're going to be vulnerable. So I say this. Have a contained player. Players. Have an inside player. Have players stunning in A-gaps, okay? If you can do these things and make sure you teach them how to be a CP player and an I, I player, inside contained player, 
you'll be a lot easier when you run your stunts. Here are some stunt examples from my book. Now, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, terminology, you know how it is. Everyone has different ones. I've learned these from past coaches, and these are the ones I use when I coach defenses. And this is for a five technique for an end, and I have them for everyone, though, for every position in my volume two book. Okay, here's a two-player stunt. That NWO one is awesome. Got that from Sam Perryman. Give you a little shout out, Sam. It's an awesome stunt. I'm not lying to you. Any additional stunts you can get or any questions, you can put them up in the top. But now we're going to do this. We're going to go on to blitzing because we don't have that much time. Blitzing. We all know this, right? Risk of blitzing. I know coaches, oh, I love co blitzing. Or some leagues can't even blitz, right? Fewer players in coverage, big play, possible touchdown. Fewer players to defend the run. Coverage must be great. If you're good at man-to-man, -man, power to you. Blitz it. Hey, send the house, coaches. I'm telling you right now. If you can cover man-to-man -man and your kids know how to play basketball, that's how I teach man-to-man. -man. If you know how to play basketball and you can cover man-to-man, -man, great. If you don't and you don't know how to play tag either, you're not a man-to-man -man guy. Get to the quarterback quick. And I'm sorry. Get to the quarterback or football faster. Might result in a sack. Might result in a loss. Might result in a quarterback error. Okay. Also, coaches, real here's a great coaching tip. One, no matter what you do, if a ball is intercepted, make sure all your linemen block the quarterback. Think about it. Why? He's the knows he made the mistake. Always, I always tell my players that if you if that if you we get an interception, four defensive linemen block the quarterback. Because if an offensive lineman catches you. You didn't deserve how to run it back, if that makes sense. Blitzing examples. You can run them out of way different formations, okay? If you see, I have my outside contained player, inside contained player, and my middle contained player, you know? And then I just have bullets A, bullets B, bullets A switch. That, I love bullets A switch. Those are phenomenal, you know? But if they're running toss a lot, I would not run some of these blitzes. Smoke is really good, especially if they run toss. But that, and, and if they know which side they're going, you can go smoke right just, you know. And again, coaches, let the players pick the blitzes. There, these are the examples of my volume two book. Hopefully I have some questions for that. Coverages, there are two different types of coverages, okay. And I don't mean to, I'm sorry, Tom, if I go a little over, I hope that's okay. Um, one is man, right? So we have one is man coverage. Guys, play a tag game. If kids can catch other kids or run past kids and chase players, that's your man people. If they play basketball and they're good at man-to-man -man on the playground, like you see them in class, even at the high school, those are your man-to-man -man players. Your zone players are your baseball players, if that makes sense. Because those outfielders or those shortstop players, they get it. Because they got to make that, ball, that little ball, they have to get to that little ball right now. Okay. Plus, they're a good with their head on a, a head on a swivel all the time in zone. Coverage examples, and we're just going to fly through these. These are in my book. Cover zero. Cover one. Cover two. Cover three. If you have never done this for your players, coach, it's awesome to do it. Some coaches run cover four, right? My cover five is man under too deep. Everyone else has different terminology, though, okay? So don't hit me for that. Cover six is a fire zone. Sending five, dropping six. Cover seven, quarter, quarter, half. In some youth games, in youth, this could be a good coverage, especially the older you get. Now, I love mixed coverage. Cover eight, I love mixed coverage. It's reading two to one. If you, as a youth coach in the older levels, can teach this, power to you. But if not, everyone runs either one, zero, zero, one, two, or three. That's usually what's in youth football at the lower levels. These are some examples of my uh, volume two on coverages. Here's some defensive calls. We talked about that, right? Under red, so that's the front and the coverage. Tight twist blue, it's a 
front, stunt, and a coverage. And if you notice the little outline, they're all colors. That are my coverages. Stack, read, A, black. So black's a coverage. Read A must be something, you know, could be, could be a stunt and a gap, but it's what that is. I can't give away all my secrets. Make sure you have an all-out blitz and make sure, coaches, you go over a prevent defense. If you are a youth coach and you never went over a prevent defense, please do it. Because if you ever lose that game at the end, you're going to regret it then. Awesome. All right, Coach, you all set? I'm all set, man. Thank you. All right, well, coaches, thanks for being on. Coach Stone, thank you for being on. I appreciate all the, the depth of knowledge for sure. Thank you so much, coaches. Make sure. I don't mean to do this, Tom. Always remember to lay a foundation one drill at a time, guys. Thank you so much. Right on. All right. Good night, Coach. Good night.